All right, it's that time again. Disc off with Conrad. This time I'm going to be at Lenora Park, but I'm playing a mix round, so it's just going to be certain holes with me, certain holes with Tyler. Guess who I have with me? It is Felix Vega. Good evening. All right, thank you. Uh, so, <laughs> we are at Lenore Park. Uh, this is where we normally have our Sunday dubs. We're going to start on hole one. Uh, hole one is a par three, 277 feet, and it is, uh, quite simple. Uh, Felix, tell me what you think about this hole. It's basically throw your hyzer or throw your forehand, putter or mid-range, depending on what you want to go with here. And just, uh, only variable really is the wind. Yeah. I think this is the the most ace ran hole on the planet. I think um, just because the bass is just sitting there, you can come at it at so many different angles. Uh, you see, Tyler took the straight route. I took the hyzer route with the gator. Uh, to me, that's just a safer route to be able to score with. I don't have to worry about being uh, too far away from the basket. One play. All right, tap in there for a bird. Even though we're not keeping score this round, this is really just for touring purposes for those people that want to come visit our park. Come play with us on Sunday, 4.30. So the the 18 down here isn't going to count the same as Macbeth's round? No, no, not quite. Uh, this is hole two, uh, par three, 268 feet. And just the opposite of one, going uphill this time. Deceptive 268 plays a lot longer than that. It does, it does. And that right there actually ended up a little bit short. Um, I know I can get that disc there, but um, like you said, sometimes it's just uh, deceptive. Got the historic red barn there. That's one of the main features of the uh, park. Not that you can go in or anything, but it's just been there since the... Uh, Probably before the county owned it, so it's still there in a historic landmark kind of thing. Uh, hole three, uh, it is a par three uh, in position A, and it's 283. What's the play here for your mid range? Yes, yeah, so I take mid range, put it out there, uh, my rock three actually, and just put it out there, let it glide over toward the basket. Uh, looks like this shot did a little bit too much gliding, so it glid too far. Is that the right word? Glid? Uh, for disc golf, yes. For any other uh, application, no. Okay. Long putt. Wow. wow. I had, Great putt. I had one today. There you go. We'll see if we can keep that. Hole four is part three. is in B's location, which is 328 feet. How do you play this with? Uh, terribly most of the time. Uh, that, those trees are all mandos to the right, and uh, there are some limbs back there that just love to knock down any distance that comes too close. Yeah. So I've only seen one person execute going under the canopy successfully, and that was actually recently. Everyone else just has the hyzer around. And I've seen one person kind of go, not above the mandos, but on a very much steeper route than everyone else takes. Now this is a putt from Tyler that just baffles me every time I see it. How to that? Every part of it is beyond the basket and then he just <laughs> falls back in. Like, I don't... Wow. Yeah, that's just crazy. <laughs> that's warlockery and it's fun. <laughs> Oh, you didn't me. take that, that different of a line yourself. You almost got some, uh, yeah, some basket yeah. love there. I almost did that. Hole five is a par three. Um, it is playing 362 feet, and this is the regular uh, location. There's an alternate in the woods for both two and five. Uh, basic route on this is just to hang it out and let it come back in if you're a righty. Left hand, I would probably Definitely. go with uh, forehand. Definitely one of the more fun holes at this location, one that you really just want to empty your bag on most of the time. Yeah. So I had to put up the last hole, and uh, this hole, I think I lost it. Yeah. Tap in, don't count. For no shame in the par there. 
Yeah, yeah, no shame. Uh, this is hole six. It is in the B location, which is still a part three, and it's 312 feet from the T. I haven't seen it in the other location in a while, but I do like that uh, that challenge. A lot of people talk bad about Lenora because it's so wide open. I mean, it's there for beginners. It's one of the older parks here in, uh, in the metro Atlanta area. Uh, but the wind is always, uh, if it's not even in play, it's in your mind. There's just enough elevation change, too, to keep you honest. And it's just, it's, it's a long park. Even though it's uh, an easy course, you still got to get the shots there. Yeah. Still got to hit those putts. Time. I'm somewhere around here, I think. Oh, there I am. Oh, there you are. Thought the video froze there. And just to prove Tyler that he's not the only one that can do that. I love a tap in for a par over a tap in for anything above a par, so. Absolutely. Hole 7, it is in B location, the only location I've ever seen it in. That is 431 feet. I would say this is probably one of the signature holes on the, on the course here. Yeah, one of the bomber holes for sure. There's uh, back to back holes here where you can really just get your distance driver and give it all you got. That is me pressing my luck trying to keep up with Tyler. I actually did keep up with him, but just had a terrible line there. I threw him by a couple of feet, but uh, he was closer to the target than I was. Looks like a long look here. Smart play is just a, an easy layup here, but let's see if he's going to run it. No, we're going to be smart about this. No. <laughs> well, I'm going to be smart about it. Let's see if Tyler's is just as smart as me, or smarter. Hmm. Oh. And then the magic trick. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't oh, think I've seen that before on an elevated basket. That's, uh, that's new. Yeah. Got some basket love before, a couple of holes ago, and uh, the basket love just ran out there. I think he's still a little baffled about that. Look, I got it on camera. <laughs> yeah. And, and posted to YouTube. <laughs> Alright, so moving hole to hole, on to hole 8, which is the other bomber hole that you were speaking of, uh, is in B's location, which is 447 feet from the tee. OB on the right just keeps you a little bit honest to make sure you don't turn something over. Yeah. I think that was the start of the time I do there. Uh, can't hear it in the background, but Tyler was saying if I pick a better line, I have a jump putt at the uh, and I picked a line similar to his basically went to the right of the tree instead of to the left wow, that was a frozen rope down the fairway there by Tyler yeah I had to check for screens man I didn't know what was going on <laughs> I would just call that a wayward upshot Telling myself in my, in my mind I have to get around the tree. Oh, there he goes. Great two there by Tyler. That's an impressive deuce on a 450 plus hole. Get close to it. Yeah. Moving on to hole nine. Uh, this is part three and it is uh, 317 feet to the pin. 
And normally when I play this role, I'm in between discs. I can either throw my rock, which I threw here, and just kind of let it glide over there. Or I'll throw a Thunderbird with a little less power and see if I can't get it to take the same line. It really depends on the wind condition. This one actually hit the tree, so it would have been closer. But that tree the is perfectly tree beat. placed. <laughs> yes. Yep. Perfectly placed. Yep. Mm. Oh, great, Roger. I said I'd take a tap in par over a tap in anything else. Absolutely. Um, and that is the end of the front nine. If you stay tuned, you can catch us for the back nine as well. Please say some closing remarks. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Check in for the back nine. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Yeah.